and welcome back to another episode of the Real Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Jacob O'Connor. Real Conversations is a podcast for those dedicated to doing hard things and living a meaningful life. Today, back with us is John Peterson. Yes, sir. We're back. It's been, I think, eight weeks since you were last on. We were in Florida, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Which was surprising to me because you kind of made a little appearance in Grant's episode last week. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking, I was like, it feels like he's been in every episode that I've done. And then I was looking back through the feed and I was like, whoa, it's been two months since you and I did that Q&A and last sat down together. Wow. That's, it doesn't seem like it's been that long. but How fast is time going, man? <sighs> Faster than I can keep up with, that's for sure. That's for sure. It's just, it seems like, you know, maybe the, you have slow days, but when you just start, when you take a 10,000 foot view, you're like, oh my gosh, that was, you know, we, we were in Florida two, three, three weeks ago now. When we were trying to get everything set up and it's like, are we actually doing the restaurant? Am I quitting my job? Is this actually happening? Florida was like so far away in the back of my mind, at least it was like, are we actually going to go to Florida? And we're going to be there for three and a half, four months. That's such a long time. And then now like we're back, we've already done it. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And, and things are moving. Things are moving now. I, I always look at it cause it was weird when I was back here and you were still working at Nextus, and mm-hmm. I was in Wichita, the days and the weeks were so slow because everything was so uncertain of, okay, what are the next steps? Are, is this actually happening? Or are we, you know, are we moving on this? Are we, is this going to dissolve in the next week or so? It was all so uncertain. And it just made the days and the weeks go by so slowly. And then, you know, and then that portion was over, and we went to Florida, and then we got to Florida, and it was like, oh, my gosh, we're doing 10, 12-hour days in the restaurant. Days were going by so slowly. And then it was over. And now we're here. And But I feel like once we've gotten back here, things have been progressing quite quickly, which yeah. is an interesting, interesting thing to think about. I feel like when we were in the restaurant, the days were – I feel like when we, when we were in the restaurant, the minutes were going slowly, but the days were going quickly. I'd agree with that. It Because it, now I look back on it, it's like – boom, snap the fingers. Like that's, that's already done. We're here. And now we're in the trenches. We're in a different style of trenches right now, figuring things out. Yeah. It's all, it's all different phases. Cause we were, we were grinding restaurant day to day restaurant stuff yeah. for a while. And now it's no restaurant stuff and we're just grinding development. Yeah. It's hiring, it's development, reading blueprints, getting an art, getting a general contractor. Just there's so many different layers to this project that we kind of knew about when we were getting started, but now that we're actually in it, you realize what you don't know. Yeah. And you realize the stark differences between the, those layers that you're talking about. It's like, you're either in the restaurant or you're not. Yeah. And, and that's just right now, I think, because once the restaurant gets started, we're going to have to wear so many hats that day to day, it's going to be different layers yep. being ap- applied each day. Yep. Um, whether that be hiring or just day to day restaurant activities, you know, uh, accounting information, stuff like that. It, I will say too, whenever you're getting started with the deal, I know a lot of pe- folks that listen are our age, younger, or just people in general that want to do business, some sort of entrepreneurship. It always feels like the deal is going to fall apart when you're getting started. At least that's how I felt. Yeah. And it's just kind of like, there's so many things that are up in the air. There's so many things you have to figure out logistically and financially. And it's, it's actually happening in my waste of my time. Like, what are we doing here? And with each step you and I took, we became a little bit more certain and a little bit more certain. And then now it's like a done deal. And it's, it's weird to think this is our reality now. Yeah, it is. It is. It's, it's wild to think about. And it's, I think it's even more wild to think about that this is our reality for a while. Mm -hmm. Like to think that, okay, we're, we're starting all these, uh, we're starting this project and we've gone through different phases of the project. But once we hit the, you know, operational, I don't even know how to say it, the the operational swing of things, I guess I would say, it's all going to get melded together. And it's it's going to be that way for a while, which Mm -hmm. is interesting. I think it's funny that we're calling it a project because people are listening to it and they're like, no, that's like a whole business. But I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think we're calling it a project because you and I see the grandiose vision of what we would like to do with this. And this is just step one to us. It's just the first project that we're knocking out. Yeah. Uh, it's just, 
Yeah, I I agree with that, and I think we call it a project because it's not a business yet. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. It's not making any money. We're we're doing things. We're spending a lot of money. Spending a lot of money. Spending a lot of money. A lot but, of money. But I don't think we can consider it a business yet. So, if you would have told me I'd be spending this much money six months ago, I would have no. I had no comment. I would just been like, "What? What are you talking about?" <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy to think about how much money you can spend so quickly on on minute decisions yeah. almost. Yeah, it's so different because like this is business finance we're talking about. When you have your personal finances, like you and I, nickel and dime, we talk about how expensive groceries are, not wanting to go out to eat sometimes because we're trying to save up money, you know, the, the dollars add up quickly. Mm-hmm. And then when we're talking about business, we quickly have had to realize that, I mean, don't be too loose with the money, but it's, it's a l- much larger scale and a different concept of, it's no longer nickels and dimes. It's now like, well, it's only, you know, a couple thousand dollars difference. Yeah. <laughs> and it, or it's, you know, $10,000 difference or much larger numbers than that. Like it, the, the scale at which we're now having to compare things relative is much different than when it was gas compared to groceries. Right. Yeah. And one thing that sticks out in my mind is like the different comparisons that you actually have to do because it's no longer, okay, I'm going to buy this for, you know, a set price and that's going to be how it is forever. Now you're taking into consideration, okay, how much is this actually going to save us in labor? Mm. Because it's not just a one-time payment that you're paying for. You're paying for employees to use this product. How reliable is this equipment? Am I going to have to service it? Is it, you know, is it going to break within the first six months? I'm going to have to be down out of this equipment for a while and then, you know, have to either supplement that by buying more equipment or getting a maintenance person out there or something like that. And so I think that's what you and I are running into. I know our oven was probably a big, it was a big purchase and we were between two ovens. One was considerably cheaper than the other one, but the technology was not there. The recommendations that we had gotten were not there. And I think the the costs that we were going to incur in labor on the less expensive one was going to constitute us not uh, not purchasing that one and going with the, the more expensive one just because it was going to cost us more in the long run. Yeah. Well, when it, when it comes to employee morale too, like you and I had the benefit of when we were in Florida, we worked at one restaurant that had the nice oven and one restaurant that was kind of the barbaric old school oven and understanding how frustrating the old style is and how much um, it can just kind of negatively impact your employee's mentality you know they, they're upset they don't want to have to deal with it cleaning the old style oven is just an absolute bear but it's something you have to do every day because the oven affects how the bacon t- tastes it affects how the biscuits are um it affects you know san- san- um, sanitation just all these other components that go into it and so it's like do we really want to spend ten thousand more dollars to get a nicer oven or i mean is it that is it worth it and you and i decided that it was and i think that that's something our employees are going to appreciate whenever they get in there and um if they've worked with the older style oven before they're going to immediately notice the difference and the benefit of this one mm-hmm, definitely definitely i'm i'm super excited to see it actually come in and and start operating and see how our employees or our our future employees will react to kind of that technology being in the, in yeah. the cafe yeah so i mean yeah I obviously, I know how you've been, but for the folks that haven't been listening, how, how have you been? I mean, it's been busy, man. Um, you know, kind of been all over the place. It's from a, a business perspective, it's been so good just because we're learning so much and we're just having to adapt um, in all areas of business. You go from operational questions to build out questions to HR questions and and things like that within the blink of an eye on a day-to-day basis, which is it's fantastic for our minds just to ad- yeah. adapt to that, but it, it's taxing for sure. Yep. You've got, um, we've got people bidding the project right now, which is part of the process for the build out of the interior of the restaurant. So John and I are in a conversation this morning and someone asked us, well, how much are you guys paying into the premiums for insurance for your employees? And then at the same time, we're getting an email asking where the tankless water heaters are going to go. And then in the back of the mind, like we're doing some sort of accounting. And there's just so many things happening at once where your brain's constantly having to switch. And it's it's so much to take in. It really is. But we're learning faster than ever. And it's fun, man. 
it is fun getting to like dive deep on something and know that we're impacting the project and it's our project. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like we're working for somebody and, and, uh, you know, our performance is, is kind of dictating what somebody else's salary is going to be or what their bonus structure is going to be this year. It's like, if we want this thing to be successful, we have to take our own path and it's our own consideration we're in right now. Right. And this is the implementation time too, which is something I really appreciate. It's like, why did I read so many books between the ages, between the age of 16 and now I'm 22? It's like, why did I read so much, watch so many videos, listen to so many podcasts, interview all these people? And it's so that one day when I was in a position where I needed to actually implement the things I'd learned, I could, and hopefully it would help the future success of whatever that business would be. And now it's like, we're here. All of these conversations that we've had, all of these things that we've learned, we're doing employee incentive structures for our managers, you know, trying to make sure that they're aligned. What motivates them? Is it external? Is it internal? Is it, you know, do they want a, a piece of, of sales? Do they want a higher salary? Do they want more days off? Do they want flexibility? What matters to these people? Right. And understanding like, it's go time. Like, let's implement it. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, it's really scary to think that you're going to be fueling someone's lifestyle, <laughs> which, it, you know, that it's a lot riding on it. It's like, well, you know, this has to be successful so that we can provide for those people and provide for their families. And da, 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 da. But it is, it's a little bit scary. It's a little bit daunting for sure. I'm excited. I'm excited as well. It's going to be good. Now, I will say on the personal level, things have also been pretty crazy because you and I have not had a, a permanent address for probably about a year now. Yep. So we've kind of been floating around, you know, here in Wichita, then we've been back in St. Louis, then we've been in Florida, then back in St. Louis, and then now we're back in Wichita, fingers crossed for good. Um, and it has to be for good now because we're getting... <laughs> it's like, what's the fingers crossed for, man? <laughs> we're... Uh, we're moving into our permanent address which is going to be good at least semi-permanent address yeah um but that's been super exciting but definitely a weird experience not being able to you know settle down settle down is a weird word but just like have a a permanent home for a little bit it's it's kind of interesting it, it's been like less stability which is fun you know this is the time the point in my life in which i'd like to travel and have all these experiences and stuff but it's also like someone asks, well, where should I send this to? Or what is your address or where are you living? And it's like, that answer changes every two to three months, my friend. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it was funny when we were in Florida, we were talking to some of the employees down at one of the cafes and they were like, oh, so you guys are like here for a little while. Where do you live when you're not here? And I was like, oh yeah, you know, we kind of just couch surf yep. or something like that. And that my girlfriend lives here and whatever in St. Louis. And they're like, so you don't have an address. And I was like, well, I guess technically not. <laughs> yeah. Like I do, but I don't. Like you can send stuff here. I'll get it eventually, but it's not like my address. And they were like, oh, so you're homeless. And I was like, whoa, whoa. I was like, well, <laughs> well. and then I started thinking about it. I was like, yeah, kind of. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> maybe maybe a little bit. So it's it's been fun. I, I really like it. Um, I'm ready for stability, uh, like a, a – a solid place where I can just yeah. put all my stuff, um, which is not my car. Uh, that's kind of annoying to have just all your stuff in your car for a little while. But, um, yeah, it's been good. An eye-opening experience for sure. Yeah. I mean, if you do the math on that too, like us not having a permanent address is – when you're young like this, this is the time to be nimble, to be lean, to try and save as, as much money as you can. We knew that – things are going to be tight for a bit that we need to have as much on hand as we can to take care of whatever we need to take care of. And it's like, if you're not paying 600, 800 bucks a month, which is, I would say fair for rents around here, all in in Wichita, and you're not doing that for a year, you just saved seven to nine grand. And that's significant. Obviously you'll find other ways to spend it and you have to rent things here. And like, we've had to, you know, stay alive to this point with other expenses, mm -hmm. but I mean, any sort of money right now is impactful and I, I kind of liked that we were willing to do whatever it took to, to be lean. Yeah, we were definitely lean. We were as lean as possible, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, in the grocery slash eating slash living slash whatever else you want to recreation. We were we were living pretty lean for a little bit. Oh, and we still are, my friend. We still are. We still will be for a little while. 
But we did just, uh, we signed on a duplex not too far from the restaurant. So I'm super excited to actually, like you were saying, have a spot to put all of the stuff. It's not going anywhere. We've signed for a year. So it's like, at least, at least we're locked in for a year. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It'd be nice for sure. It sucks. It's on a dirt road, but you know. <laughs> they'll pave it eventually. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now it's, it's been good though, for sure. I think it's kind of funny because we got a lot in Florida. People were saying like, are you guys brothers? Like everyone thought we were brothers. And I think it's just, we spend that much time together that we, we know each other's mannerisms. We probably have similar mannerisms. We think very similarly. It, if you look at the amount of time you and I've spent since you moved to Wichita and then now compound that with the fact that we're business partners again, and we share an office and we're living in the same house it's disgusting how much time we spend together. I know. <laughs> I think about it sometimes, and I'm, I'm like, man, I gotta, I gotta find a new hobby that you don't like or something like that. So yeah, to get away for a little bit. But no, it's good. I think uh, all jokes aside, I think um, you know, I think that's how you have to be if you're going to be in business with somebody and actually have a good relationship with them is to be able to spend a lot of time together and as much as it sucks sometimes as as much as you and I hate each other (laughs) sometimes you know I think that's something that we have that it's just like we're able to get away from each other decompress and then you know get stuff done I think it's hilarious though too because we default back to being best friends once we get like some free time like you go from business partner and then whatever else and then it's like okay we've got a couple hours, it's an evening, it's the weekend, whatever, you want to go to a bar. And it's like, well, who am I asking first? It's going to be John and vice versa. Like yeah. even in our free time, it's like, all right, let's go do something together. Yeah, exactly. Like who else are we going to invite? Well, I, I don't know who else is available. <laughs> well, we'll just go and <laughs> just be you and out. I, man. <laughs> we'll just figure it out from there. Yeah. So, but it's good though. It I is good. That's what you need if you're going to have a good business partner, somebody that you can do that with and, you know, keep that relationship going. So... I, I also wanted to, man, there's a couple other things to have in this conversation that I want to hit today. One of them is I tossed up a QA and a on the Instagram. So I did see a couple questions come in. I don't remember what they are, but we'll check those in a bit. The other thing I want to talk about too is we're young. Like I want to go. I want to, I want to build something and, and move quickly. And I know that you feel the same way. Mm-hmm. But it's also like yesterday we were meeting with someone that you and I both really respect. It's a relationship that we've worked hard to cultivate over the last year and a half and we're building this team of business advisors for us, people that we can go to as a soundboard that have great connections that we just kind of respect that have built awesome things. And we're sitting down with him and we had asked him if he wanted to be an advisor for us. And he agreed. And it was like, wow, like to come this far of you and I, when we were finishing up at Wichita State, I mean, the entire time we were at Wichita State in general, we're working so hard to meet all of these people. They didn't know who we were. They're like, why are these kids keep showing up in the in this room? How do they get into this room? Why are they emailing me? Like just trying to make ourselves as known and as visible as possible. And now we're finally starting to see those relationships come to fruition of it's no longer it, – it's, it's a whole different level now where we can call up these people. We can meet with them. You know, maybe we want to – figure out how to align ourselves in the future on other opportunities too. And it's just like, we're finally starting to, to come into a new phase of those relationships. And that's really cool to see too. Yeah. The the relationships are really interesting. <laughs> I used to not, you know, I, when I got to Wichita or even before that, I was not a very good conversationalist slash networker. It was bad. It was, it was real bad. And so you know, all of those opportunities to get in those rooms and speak or meet with people and just shake hands. Those reps are so good. And now I feel like I've gotten to the point where obviously I don't think anybody's ever an expert or perfect in those situations, but to feel more comfortable and to go in to a conversation with maybe somebody who is ultra successful or something like that and be able to sit down and confidently tell them who you are and what you're doing and things like that is something that I didn't have before, but it feels really good. Yeah. You know, to be able to go in there and be like, okay, you know, this person has done a lot more than me, but they're no better than I am, Mm -hmm. you know, from, 
from just like a person to person aspect and they want most likely they want to see me successful Mm -hmm. you know i want to tap into some of their knowledge and create create a relationship and it's like they wouldn't have taken this meeting if they really didn't want to right you know mess with us or or uh help us out in, in some way so that knowing that and making making myself know that before I go into a conversation like that, it, it just has impacted me a lot. It can be intimidating, but I also love it because it's kind of like a game to me. Like I'm the kind of person, whenever I go watch someone give a lecture or tell their story in like in a public space, I'm like, I want that person to know me on a personal level. I want to be able to call them up and I want to have like a real business relationship with this person. And that's exactly what had happened with this guy is we went to watch him speak at one of the events here in town and we're like, all right, let's, let's find a way to make this happen. And then yesterday we're wrapping up and and heading out after meeting with them. And he's done some very significant things in Wichita, like the utmost respect for this gentleman. And he goes, whenever, after we asked him and we were kind of wrapping up, he was like, I'm happy you guys stayed. Wichita gained by having you both here. And I'm excited to help you with whatever you guys are doing. Yeah. And that was like that, that was a really cool full circle moment to go, from not knowing this gentleman at all a year and a half ago to like this moment now. Yeah, it was, it's really cool to be able to talk to people like that and just have that relationship and have access to that because there is a lot in the knowledge of that person yep. and in the name of that person. Yep. So just to have that um, is, is really powerful. But I wanted to go back before I forget because you, at the beginning of your, uh, your last comment, full circle Mm -hmm. kind of transition you said something about moving too quickly Mm -hmm. and this is something that you and i have talked about quite extensively (laughs) in terms of the restaurant because you know we want to move as quickly as possible but not overload ourselves to the point where we're unsuccessful at our duties i guess is what i would say yeah and that is something that i still ponder very often because We want to make sure that we're moving at an adequate pace to where we're still adapting. We're still having to be flexible and pushing ourselves, but not to the point where we're not doing our job correctly or doing, you know, putting out a poor product or um, stretching ourselves too thin or something like that. So I, I think that's a good conversation for us to have. And I, I want to know your thoughts as well. I kind of mentioned it a little bit, but, um, I think it's really important. Yeah. I, I think it's funny because these are conversations you and I have had a hundred times at this point, but it's an impossible question of how do I move quickly without misstepping? Mm-hmm. Because you also can't fall into analysis paralysis where you're too afraid to make a step because you don't want to misstep because that's going to stop you from action. It's going to slow you down. And that's the opposite of what we want right now. We want massive action. We want to move quickly. And so it, it really is like you just go back and forth over it and, at the end of the day, you and I are going to set up metrics, I think, that will be indications of we are on the right path and ready to scale, ready to move quickly, ready to take on more opportunity and responsibility. And um, at the end of the day, you know, we got to nail this restaurant, this location, and we, we got to make sure we're hitting the metrics that count and that things are stable. But we're also, by nature, we're, we're aggressive. And I love that about us. And I'm excited for that. Yeah, I'm excited for it too. It's it's interesting that you say misstep because in my mind, there's two types of missteps, like missteps that greatly affect and uh, greatly affect negatively, mm-hmm. and missteps that you can make, and learn from, adapt quickly, and it's probably a net positive. Yeah, you know what I mean. So when you say misstep, I, that just sparked into my mind. I was like. We want to misstep in the right ways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It, yeah. We're, we're open to, to failure. Like, that's going to happen. We've already, man, it, if you guys could see the level of ignorance that we have, or that rather we had, but without admitting that ignorance, we would never have asked the questions that we needed to, to learn as much as we have at th- this point and that we'll continue to learn. Mm-hmm. And so I think having that humility has been huge. And there's been a lot of missteps already, but it's also like you don't want to make a, a seismic catastrophic misstep of jumping too quickly, too big, and then you fall flat on your face and you can't get back up. Like as long as we can get back up, it doesn't have to be pretty or you're, you're fine, but you don't want to completely just 
jump off a cliff. Yeah, we don't want to be dumb. Yeah. We don't want to be dumb. Yeah. Calculated decisions, for sure. No, that, that's a good distinction. Calculated decisions, not dumb. Simply put. <laughs> simply put. <laughs> Very simply put. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I love it. So um, I guess I'll jump into the questions unless you have anything else. No, go ahead for it. We originally wanted to record this at the uh, at the restaurant in the shell before it gets built out because I think it'd be really cool to see the progression in the background as we're talking. So I brought all my equipment, started to get it set up this morning, and I'm taking a lap around because we have uh, we have heating in there. We've got lights and stuff, and I realized we don't have a single outlet set up yet, <laughs> and so I couldn't plug anything in. We couldn't do the podcast there. So now we're recording just next door, um, in the aloft hotel. Yeah, in the hotel, and so. Check it out if you need a room in North Wichita. <laughs> give, give a little plug right there. Give a little plug. All right. I've got four questions. I don't know if I'll do all of them. Yeah. All right. Uh, first one. Man, John, you got some fans out here. Mm. <laughs> what is John's weight and what is his goal weight? <laughs> oh, dang. Personal questions all first. Gotcha. <laughs> what percent body fat? <laughs> yeah, right? I don't actually know what percent body fat, but um, I sit – as I sit right now, I sit anywhere from 225 to 230. Kind of fluctuates based off of the, you know, what I eat day to day, day to day, um, how much water I drink, what time of day it is. It just kind of fluctuates there. Um, we were actually talking about this yesterday or the day before. Last, not last January, but the January before, I was sitting at like 240, yeah, 240 or 245. I can't remember, but. I was on a pretty heavy bulk. It was a long bulk. It was like a <laughs> eight to ten month bulk. And you guys can go back and listen to those episodes. I think we did quite a few episodes on yeah. on that. Especially um, there's one that I rem- remember distinctly of us doing um, the three fifteen bench oh, yeah. episode, the goals and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I I sat pretty heavy there, um, but I was also hitting really solid numbers. And, oh yeah, which feels really really good. Uh, but I sit at 225 right now. Um, goal weight, I would like to go on another bulk. I'm, I'm not going to lie, but I think I would do a quicker bulk this time where it's just, um, you know, six to eight, six, probably six months mm-hmm. where I could just gain, 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 and then, and then cut. And so I'm kind of waiting for maybe the end of the summer to do that. Um, but for that, I would like to get back up to, you know, 240. If I could add 15 pounds. And then I'd cut be, down to what? Cut back to 230 yeah. or something like that or 235. Um, you and I have been watching a lot of Sam Solik lately, and that's that's his um, kind of model is he gains a bunch of weight, not necessarily terrible weight, but mm-hmm. obviously not the most lean he's he's been, and then he'll cut for three months or something like that with a net positive yeah. muscle growth. And then he'll uh, go up, go back on a bulk and he just kind of follows that trend. And it seems to be working well. I don't think he's totally just eating chicken and, and rice, but I think there's some other <laughs> factors that play into that. <laughs> some but, other substances that help him. <laughs> yeah. But, it, and that seems to be the, the model that a lot of people follow. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well, I mean, Question goes back to you, too. I want you to uh, voice your opinion on what your goal weight is. Yeah, so I am, uh, I've been posting this on my Instagram, shooting for 190 currently. I'm actually right there, weighed myself yesterday at 189.6. So I, I've gotten as high as 192, it just kind of fluctuates based on time of day and if you just ate or whatever the deal is. And so it weight goes back and forth. I'd like to get to 190 in the morning, like just flat how you, how you should weight yourself mm-hmm. um and then kind of focus more on running after that but ideally i'd like to get up to 200 and be a healthy 200 where i can still do an ultra and i can still run a marathon uh, i think that's going to be like a good ending weight for me but that'll likely take a couple more bulking and cutting cycles over the next four to five years if i had to guess mm-hmm. yeah 200 i feel like that's pretty heavy for sure it, I mean, it is, but then you look at people um, like Nick Bear, for example, if you guys know who that is, he, he's he got good size on him. He runs really far, too. He runs really quick as well. He's done a sub 
he did like a two hour and 38 minute marathon. He's ran a hundred miles a couple times, uh, but he can really move some weight in the gym. He's right at my height whenever I looked it up. And so, I mean, obviously genetics have a factor as well, but he sits anywhere from 200 to 220, I want to say. Wow. And so I, I think 200 would, it'll take some work to like, you know, make sure everything's moving as it should. But I think I can get to 200 being a good weight to sit at. Does he, do you know if he goes on like a, a strict bulk cut cycle or he, he just kind of. He does everything in training blocks. So like he did a, a bodybuilding show. He did like a, a weightlifting goal he was shooting towards. He did a marathon prep. He did an ultra marathon prep. So I think he allows his body weight to fluctuate based on the goal. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, next question. <laughs> Man. Are you short or is John just really tall? <laughs> oh, dang. I know. Um, a little bit of both, I guess. <laughs> Shut up, dude. <laughs> a little bit of both. No. Uh, I sit about six, seven, usually six, eight, probably with shoes on, boots, six, eight, probably. Um, so I am probably on the taller side of the spectrum, if I was to guess, probably in the, you know, what is that, second deviation, second standard deviation, maybe. You're in the upper quartile is all I know. Yeah, you you are a tall gentleman. Quartile. If you take a – that's why taking pictures with you really sucks because I look so small next to you. Well, yeah. Yeah, it, it does. But it, it it helps. It helps. Except for on planes. Planes are not fun for me. But <laughs> <laughs> planes or small seating is not fun for me. But, yep. yeah, I get it from my parents. My parents are tall. My dad's six 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 seven, and my mom's six foot. So Great chance. Gotta, yeah, I got a – Tall family for sure. Yeah. So verdict's in. John's tall. Yeah. All right. Um, Not vertically challenged. Last question that we'll do. I'm curious. W- what is your biggest fear for the immediate future, one to two years? My biggest fear in terms of what? <laughs> <laughs> That's all it said. What is your biggest fear in the immediate future? My biggest fear in the immediate future is... Hmm, that's a good question. It could be fears plural, too. Fears, plural. Gotcha. Um, well, one of my biggest fears is uh, being caught in a fire. That's pretty scary. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like, uh, so that's that's probably. I don't want to bring anything into into existence here, but that is definitely my biggest fear and probably the worst way to pass away is for the man with matches in his backpack and that has a lighter on him in his car. <laughs> Hey, I didn't say you didn't need it to survive yeah. in a situation, but I don't want to be caught in one. That's that's for sure. Evan, you can stick to the fires, man. Yes, yeah. you uh you got it on yeah. that one. But I'd say one of the biggest fears that I have professionally is that the economic the economics don't work out and it's nothing that you and I could have predicted slash um, had any control over Mm -hmm. that negatively shuts a business down or something to that nature. Because I think, you know, we can control what we can control. And I have confidence that you and I will be able to, um, you know, use those to our benefit as much as possible. But if there's some great economic event that happens where, um, you know, things are not looking well or you know something happens uh that's probably my biggest fear for our business and and stuff like that yeah that's what really sucks the things that are out of your control yeah because you can't do anything about it i mean Mm -hmm. 2008 financial crash on a microeconomic scale you and i as individuals can't do anything about that obviously didn't affect us because i was seven at the time but you know COVID, for example, that was deemed an act of God and that ended my senior year, but it also had mac- massive economic effects. And Definitely. You and I can't do anything on a personal level about that either. Put a lot of restaurants out of business. It's put, yes, and that that was a huge frustration for me. You look at New York specifically with that situation, the amount of multi-generational family businesses that were just scraping by for generations, but that was their thing is, you know, they had a pizza parlor in a very historic street in uh, New York. And that, that was their what they had done, you know, that meant so much. And that was their family legacy. And it was shut down from a massive economic situation that was not in their control. And, you know, that 
that just really sucks. It really does. And I feel for those people. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that I, I share that fear with you. I did a whole episode on what I'm most worried about right now. That's also, you know, my fear for the future as well. It's just um, momentum and understanding compound interest, the things that I'm doing on a daily basis and how they're impacting the future. And, you know, delayed gratification is incredibly important uh, when you're factoring the equation of momentum. And so it's like how much to enjoy the moment right now, you and I have a good time doing X, Y, and Z versus sitting down and continuing to work and work extra hours so that we have a larger payoff in the future. That's a, that's a constant kind of battle that I think plays well into that momentum conversation that I'm always having in the back of my head. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. What's, uh, what's your biggest fear, fear? Like either that's like a, a you're dying in, in some aspect or you don't want to drown or falling from an airplane somehow or you and i went skydiving so i don't think that's gonna be it yeah that's probably not it i don't like heights heights really screw me up but yeah yeah so it was skydiving pretty trippy for you it wasn't as bad as i thought just because it, i think it was so surreal and mm-hmm. i didn't really have any option at that point but when we were doing the vr stuff with uh grant johnson um doing the uh game called plank mm-hmm. made my hands sweaty it's where you're you know, you put on the goggles and you're put into this world where you have to walk out on a hundred story building or something like that. And mm. on this two by four, and it makes you feel like you're actually up there. You can hear things and see obviously everything. And that scared the heck out of me. Yeah. Yeah. I, my fears are probably more pertaining towards, I mean, less about things happening to me and more about familial people I care about those types of things. Not not being around home is hard on me because, you know, I've got nieces and nephew that are starting to grow up and hopefully more coming, fingers crossed, and everyone's trying to consolidate in that St. Louis region. So I think that is more of a fear is regretting not being around more. So I'm trying to do as much as I can at this current time to, like, be around for the big things and to make as many trips home as I can and to keep in touch and calls and texts and whatever else. But I, I would say that's uh, more of, for me. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I like that a lot. So, okay, I think we're going to wrap up so you and I can get back to work unless you had anything else. I don't think so. I think that's all I really had. All right, if you guys enjoyed this episode, please make sure to share it with a friend. It makes a huge difference. I would really appreciate it. Like, honestly, if you could just click on that little up emoji or whatever that kind of graphic is on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, share the link with one or two people you think might enjoy it. That would be great post it on your story, however you want to share the message. But I appreciate you guys. Uh, You can find me on Instagram at Jacob O'Connor. John is at the John Pete. And we'll be back next week for episode 100. Let's go. See you.